19, I went to the skate plaza in Vancouver for the very first time. I stumbled across skateboarder Rene Girard. I took a video clip of him skating and then we became friends. So I am so happy to sit back and interview Mr. Girard and find out his many, many thoughts on skateboarding, on how he started and where he believes the sport is going. Hope you enjoy the interview. Sounds, sounds good. Ladies and gentlemen, I have today skateboarder extraordinaire. Um, man, I, I, I don't even know where to begin. I saw him skate in Vancouver, and this guy is a really, really good guy, and he's a great skateboarder. I bring you Rene Girard, and he actually says it's Rene. How you say it, man? Rene Girard. Yeah, it's, I can't do that. Uh, <laughs> not exactly. I, I don't. I don't want. I don't stress about it. it doesn't matter to me. Cool, cool, yeah. cool, man. People call and call me. Some people call me Renal because my my first name and my last name. Anyway, so there's a lot of uh, nicknames. As long as people give me respect, I don't really care. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, people have called me many names. You know, <laughs> and if they can just call me by my first yeah. and last name, that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> man, so welcome, man. We, you know, I'm so happy to be doing this with you. Um, you, you said you you were gonna you were gonna get into how you started, how you got started. You said you started. Yeah, I can, yeah, I can. I can. If yeah, absolutely. You can ask me question, or I can just give you a bit of a rundown of my uh, since it's probably about skateboarding. It's pretty much what. Uh, my first passion in life. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, definitely. I, I started skateboarding in, uh, well, yeah. So I was born in Gatineau, Quebec, uh, 1978. And uh, like every kid, like, I basically like, split lots of sport. I was lucky. I, my parents were really, uh, got me into like soccer, tennis, ping pong, like a lot. So I, I grew up very, very like athletic and very like, um, you know into being active and and around 86 87 my cousin who i was like you know a little older than me who like listened to iron major and they were really cool got skateboard and i was like all right i, mean, I need a skateboard and i got a uh very flex for my mm -hmm. diablo in 19, 1986 or 87 like i got a photo of me in the, dr in the uh, driveway in front of my my house and my dad sent it to me uh kind of as as like hey that, that was like the beginning of the rest of your life because this is something i started and i never stopped like i'm 42 and i still been skate i never stopped skateboarding since those days i've been you know obviously there's been um up and down because i've been injured and stuff like that but yeah um but yeah <laughs> i'm gonna if you're gonna have to stop me sometime. I can I I can keep on talking, and uh, it might make no sense. You'll have to do some edits. <laughs> no, no, man. It makes perfect sense. It makes perfect, perfect. sense. Yeah. So basically, skateboarding. Ba basically, when when I stepped on a skateboard, I fell in love. I was I loved the freedom about it. Um, and as a as a kid that like loved at being active, but didn't really like like to like constantly having to deal with making like lots of friends. I felt like skateboarding was like a very like unique on your own. You don't need to, you, you don't rely on a team. So I really appreciate that right away. I was like, this is very, this is freedom. Yeah. I can go I like agree. everywhere. I, I can, and it's not like a bike. I, I don't need to park. I can grab it. I can walk it and like you have it in your hand and it's like something that represents, like, I don't know, right away. I knew I had something special. Even so, there was a lot of people back then that were like didn't quite appreciate. But for some reason, when you know there's something right within you, you're like, I know, I know that makes sense. So I just always kept doing it regardless of what people would think. So yeah, <coughs> sorry, drink a little bit of water. And uh, yeah, and then when I when I learned to ollie, that that was the rest. Like I got like I was chasing the. <laughs> I chased it. That's basically it. Like skateboarding is uh, once you discovered like that you can do like tricks and stuff like that. Well, yeah, it's beautiful. 
Oh man, you feel like a superhero. You feel oh, like, yeah, exactly. you feel like a superhero, you know. And yeah. That's, that's, no. that's exactly, that's, exactly. You know, you you have you know, there's people that um, <laughs> You know, you look at the superheroes and they're, they're flying and they're jumping and, and they're doing, you know, incredible stuff. And we just feel every time, you know, we do an ollie or. Yeah, exactly. Or you do a trick, or you, you let, jump up on a curb and you jump off and it's just, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Like it's skateboard and it's, that's a, that's always, oh, I, I, I like skateboarding was very creative and I, I always loved drawing. As a kid, I was a very like, art, like. Even so, I was very active. I always kind of was more because I was a small kid, uh, like the sport like hockey and the more contact. I was not really as like prone, so I was like more attracted to like these less like more like ping pong, tennis, like single, like one on one that you're kind of. And then skateboarding just had like everything because it's like there's no barrier, there's no, and then the city is your canvas. That's right. And, That's right. And as a kid from you know eighties, nineties, we yeah, the freedom. Like I was, my parents did not know where I was. I was like going everywhere. As long as I was coming back to my to my place uh, at a decent time, my parents had no idea where I was skateboarding. So it's like there was like this beauty of like, like discovering near different neighborhood, and then like the second there was another kid with a skate you're like kind of like especially back back in those days there was not that many of us so we we connected right away and that really created something that i feel like in any other aspect you can like just because of that one passion i'm friend with people that that's what we got in common and that's such a beauty and and, and when you look at at how we could coexist in the world skateboarder really lead by example because if you go to the skate park there's a lot of different color dots different mentality but they all have that one you know passion is skateboarding and because of that they can get along regardless of they have that slightly different politic view don't like the same music but we speak skateboarding and can if we could have that same passion about being humans imagine that we could just all coexist <laughs> just like hey i'm passionate about being humans on this planet i don't know why we're here but it's awesome you know i don't have the answer you don't have the answer your god is cool my god is cool like you know and i feel like skateboarding is kind of teaching us like for me it teaches me that it teaches me to be more accepting to different background not to be judgy like being like in a helping you know oh my friend that were like not as privileged as me I got extra wheels for you. My my parents got money. They're gonna buy me other wheels. I took advantage of my parents to help some of my friends because I knew, I knew I could. Because it's like, and also that's how I got raised. If you have more than enough, you, you share. That's how my parents say, like raised me. And skateboarding kind of taught me. Yeah, definitely. It's yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I could talk about skateboarding for forever. Man, it's everything. It's this- everything. Renee, man, I I love your passion. I love how you just you know you 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 got so much to say, and, and the, I'm like, man, you, I don't even have to really say much for this interview. <laughs> I know, I know that's a not it's not a problem. But sometimes, yeah, definitely, I, I can. If you if I have a subject I like, I can shoot the shit. But also, I want to make sure that uh, I'm not just repeating myself and not making no sense. But no, yeah, you're making a lot of sense, man. If anybody yeah. watching this video, they'll be saying, "Man, like," and, and if they love skateboarding, they they will one hundred percent agree with everything you're saying. Yeah, and I got in the background too. I don't know if you can see. I can see, okay. it. I can see it. Yeah, basically Neil Blender. Neil Dan Blender. Gray. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So so two two big influence and two basically. Danny Way for me is basically like the the guy that taught me that there's no injury that can really stop you from skateboarding if you want to take if you are willing to do the path to come back to skate like he was basically like almost paralyzed in 93 
and came back a year later in 94 and, and won a, a vert contest. Um, I mean, this is, there's more detail. There's, you can see the story probably online. It's, a, it's, so inspir like, it's so much inspiration. So like, guys like that is definitely like, okay, I have no excuse. If you skate to that level at his age, like, I can skate to my level for a long time. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Danny Way, the, 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 biggest, the biggest thing I remember Danny Way. I used to watch videos every day, every single day, man. I watched the Shackle Me Not at yeah. least like 400 times or more in my life. <laughs> <laughs> obsessed with those videos i watched public domain like a thousand times you know yeah i know all the parts i know everything man um one of the one of the key key things there's so many videos that i watched but the one thing that always stuck with me and it's still up to today is when danny way says in shackle me not his first part he says anybody can learn anything they want it just takes time you remember that when he was skating yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely and that's exactly what I liked about skateboarding is skateboarding, there was no shortcut. And also, it's just, for me, what I enjoy is basically it's like dancing. Is you, you, but you're dancing with, you, you, because when you think about it, we're trying to make trick look a certain way. We, we think about how we put our body. We think about what mm -hmm. we wear. So no matter what people want to say skate way more like dancing or gym like i mean i know like a lot of skateboarders don't like the idea of like you know the, the olympic sport and all that stuff but if i was gonna come like think of skateboarding for me personally that's the beauty skateboarding can be whatever you want it to be like and that's what i love about skateboarding because if you if you want it to be like uh, a jock sport, sport you can't you can't like it, it, it's it, skateboarding is wide open to what you want it to be for you to create whatever tricks you want whatever move and and that's what i love and it's now it's now than more than ever with this w girl and woman movement all the, this all thing is great i'm like I, i'm like so happy that i chose skateboarding back in those days because now I'm riding this wave of awesomeness and I was part of it. Not like I didn't do much as like, uh, like, but I, I was definitely watching and participating and, you know, spending my money and just loving it. So, and everybody that, that are skateboarding, no matter what, how good they are, the second you, 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 you go to bed and you, think about skateboarding you're a skateboarder no matter how good you are like i hate this idea that oh, you need to be this good because i had so many friends that stopped because they thought you, you need to be no there's like so many ways to be good at skateboarding and then the the, the way to be good at it is to have fun <laughs> for number, me number it's, one number one yeah. have fun yeah and the second you have fun good is what it's like like dopamine happen when you you're just having like sometimes I have fun and I didn't like the best session or sometimes the session I didn't really land much but every movement everything the laugh and like the interaction with my friend mm -hmm. interaction with the obstacle and trying to figure it out and you know it's all part of the the journey of of making it um, happen at one point because I was way more impatient when I was younger, because I didn't realize that certain tricks take 10 years to learn for certain <laughs> individuals. I'm not a natural in a sense that I had to work hard, but I think everybody works hard for skateboarding. Like, I don't believe that there's natural, my cat's trying to get in the way here. <laughs> I don't believe in natural talent. I feel like the people that we like to see that have natural talent are the one that are just spending more time, you know? So it's just what it is. Like you say, Piraz is not natural talent. No, Piraz work is at, like work really hard, spend hours perfectionate. Like he's a perfectionist. So that's exactly it. There's no shortcut. And so for, for everybody needs to, and 
the better you get at skateboarding, the harder it gets, and then the, the, the fall gets a little bit more, and you need to look at it differently. Like, okay, you need to not just learn the trick, you need to figure out the way out of it just in case. You know? Yeah, foot placement, so, everything, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the body awareness is amazing, and that's, that's kind of what, for me, as an older man, I feel it, 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 it just keeps me kind of more agile and it just feels more fun to age when you're able to to do stuff like that instead of i don't i feel like quitting skateboard like for me yeah like definitely i think it was jay adam he said you don't become i'm gonna totally butcher this his quote i think he said something along like you don't grow you don't grow old you don't quit skateboarding because you're too old. You become old because you quit skateboarding. Something along those lines. I totally butchered it, but anyway, I should have googled it and before I said it. But that's but yeah, that's kind of a a good line to live. You know, it's true. Our body are are meant to move until we die. Pretty much. So uh, and well, skateboarding, I think. It, go ahead. I I like I like what you're saying, but I'm going to. Um... They're, especially for me, and I know my body, and I look at people like, I look at people like Tony Hawk, I look at people mm -hmm. like Omar Hassan, I look at people like Bob Burnquist, I look at people like Bucky Lazic. Oh, those guys are like amazing. <laughs> I just, I, then, it's just for me, like, it's like, wow. And, and Steve Caballero, and you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but here's the thing. I I stopped for a lot of years. Like I was, I, I you know, even before Instagram and all that stuff, um, I, I was, I wasn't, I was always thinking about it every day. Mm -hmm. I'm like always thinking about it. Like yeah. I, would be, I would be at work, and you know, I'm in a sales office, and I'm I'm looking. I'm at this is this is a this is imagine this is a um, printer printer machine. And yeah. I'm always thinking about a back backside tail slide. Yeah. And people are, like, people are like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm just, they're like, oh, you're dancing? And I'm like, no, and I'm not, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'm dancing. Cause I can't, I you, <laughs> no, no, you never stop being a skateboarder. I try, cause for, for a long, my relation with skateboarding was not always healthy because I skated hard for a long, you know, like when I was a kid, when I started being like, you know, basically like i started well it was pretty easy to be good compared to a lot because there was not a lot of us so right away because i was putting more hour than most kid in my neighborhood i became kind of like the kid that was good at skateboarding but it's just because i put more hour and there was not many but then i started going going to other neighborhood going to ottawa and i started meeting like basically joe buffalo and i i, I you know rick mccrank all those kids when I was like, mm -hmm. and that's funny because back then I didn't really speak English well at all. I, I, I had like a small amount, just enough to get by, but I was very Francophone, very French because get snow in my neighborhood, my family, it was French. I, 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 and I was only exposed to the small amount of English in elementary school and high school, which was horrible. So I, I could get by, but that was not much communication. So when I first met those guys, it, the the only thing we spoke was skateboarding and the only reason why they we 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 they accepted me but it was just because we i was able to just my energy even without communication they they, they enjoyed my presence so it's like i was skateboarding with them and in that way i was able to get better at english it, they helped me learn english mm -hmm. so i learned like english on the street <laughs> pretty much <laughs> So it's funny because, and then for the longest time, I was like, uh, I, I I was, you know, bash my, oh, my English not good, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I, I learned it the way that I learned, you know, I always learn kind of basically by just doing, trying by, yeah, exactly. Like, just like skateboarding. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like and I think I think Yuto Horogome is 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 you know his English is is improved a lot too just because he's skating around Americans all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, same thing. So how yeah. do you how do you feel about the Olympics being in skateboard uh, skateboarding being in the Olympics? Uh, the 
I'll put it two ways. Like basically, like I'll say, like the twenty-year-old me, the like the the raw skater, would I? I was like basically the way I see it. They need us more than we need them. <laughs> so that I see it because they want some, they want the views. They know we can bring the views, and they'll make a profit. That's the only reason why they're giving us the attention. But the forty-two-year-old who like you know wants the future and all that stuff i'm all about if they it, as long as the right people can m make the money and the money can come back to the right people and that's the problem with a lot of those big corporation is only a few get the taste of that ink, that money but it's always the people above that only care about skateboarding if it brings profit because the, the skateboard company that been struggling and been going the up and down from all these, you know, like fi financial, there's been so many crush in 2008 and all that stuff. They, they were, they kept it going because of the passion, because if they were not there for that reason, they would have like pulled the plug right away. And also a lot of company, if you get into the pod, probably got bought by bigger corporation to keep going. That's a <laughs> other topic. I, for me, skate like the, the the sponsorship and all the money, I kind of stayed away from it. I was kind of scared from it. That's why I never really like. Besides shop sponsor, I never really wanted to. Well, that's not true. I was in security. I just didn't like to be judged that way. I figured that if I was just skating for myself, it's the best way. I just can be at. You, I can you could have made a living. I mean, you you got some real good skill. You could have made a living. Uh, yeah, I don't like this. Yeah, I, I was told that, but I chose a different path. And I, there was some time in my life that my injuries and stuff like that, like, I'm, I'm actually like, skating really good and, like, pain-free and no brace and uh, no, like, Advil or anything like that. But I'm in a really, like, serious routine of, like, lots of, like, yoga nidra, stretching, drinking water. I don't drink alcohol. Well, I drink one or two drink a year uh very occasionally so because i didn't quit drinking because i was at a drinking problem i quit drinking because i didn't want to be dehydrated and i didn't think that was really helping me perform so i kind of took everything out when i got older i just started taking everything out of the equation as, as much as possible that are not good for me i have a sweet tooth so for me like if i if i'm gonna choose quit something i'd rather just don't drink and i'll have my sugar here and there because uh you know <laughs> once in a while i like my uh my cheesecake and stuff like that but those are the decisions i made but i don't like that's the thing it's for me like i have a lot of friends that drink and it works for them i don't care mm -hmm. i don't i we we live every day we die once you you do you as long as you're a good person for me i'm not uh I'm not here to tell you how to and everybody needs to go through their path and at some time i feel i learned a lot of my best lesson work through like dumb stuff or like you just go so sometimes maybe you need some people need that <laughs> just to go into the bottom to just like rise up and be a better person there's a lot of my friend that came up from you know they they, they went pretty low and rise up you know uh joe buffalo is one of them uh i'm gonna name drop him because i'm super proud of him um uh, he's be yeah he's amazing uh and he went through a really rough time and he's basically a new person now and he's bringing a lot of positive uh thing and to his to the his world uh, because of skateboarding that's another thing that skateboarding does it's a good outlet yeah for sure for sure that's the, yeah and, and we came along for a skate shop you used to work for a skate shop yeah i worked uh i worked for aniki live for uh for a few years back uh that was in like the skate shop was in ottawa um but they also had one in get snow because basically i was uh, i moved out west in like 99 i made the move to whistler uh because uh, as a francophone <coughs> sorry as a francophone that's not a popular thing to do a uh, coughing but uh 
this is because it's uh, it's my Friday and I had a, a joint earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of okay to say it's legal, so whatever. For real, um, for real. Yeah, I know it's so funny because I, it's funny that I still have this weird feeling of every time I say weed and stuff like that, that oh, that I have to be careful. It's so funny. We were like, yeah, because we're from that time, you know, that mm -hmm. we had to hide. It's kind of, it's kind of funny. But uh, now I lost my train of thought, as I do always. Um, what was I saying? You were talking about, oh uh, man, what are you talking about? I know, I talk about, I talk a lot. Um, talk about Joe Buffalo and then we basically, whoa, that's amazing. As I was talking about weed and blank brain fart. Yeah, yeah, you were talking, oh man, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> we will take a break and we'll be right back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much what just happened right now. Um, we'll come back to it. Yeah, cannot remember. It's funny because we, if we rewind, we could find out. But oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out later. But uh, come back to skateboarding. Um, so yeah, so I moved to I moved to Whistler because as a francophone, that's exactly what I was talking about. As a francophone, it was it was. Skate shop, exactly. So I worked in a skate shop in, uh, 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 in Ottawa when I was still living in Get, in Get it Snow. And then when I did the move to, uh, in 99, I did the move to Whistler uh, because I had a friend I was already living there. I had a, a, a cooking job for me and it was a perfect opportunity for me uh, to just go explore the, another part of the world that... Um, that I just was curious about. I kind of forgot about one of the small reasons why I got hooked on the, the moving out west was I went to a trip to Banff in 98 snowboarding and I fell in love with the mountain. I was just like, oh my God. Because I was also a snowboarder. Like skateboarding was always my first love. But snowboarding was something that I was privileged, privileged enough to be introduced to because of uh, having mountain nearby skiing, uh, having a, a father that ski and introduced me to ski. So brought me to the little local hill. So I, I grew up also doing winter sport. Uh, so snowboarding was something that I um, uh, was also into that made the, the, the Quebec winter a little bit uh, more manageable as a skateboarder because it was tough in the, in the winter and it was depressing not being able to, to uh, skateboard. So snowboarding really made it, uh, made the winter a lot more fun. Uh, so that was one of the things also that I've been doing. So yeah. when you, when you were in Whistler, right? Mm -hmm. um, when you were in Whistler, I got it. Did you, you used to skate that skate park? I, I got to visit that skate oh, yeah. park back in 2008. I yeah. thought it was really dope. I skated the, you know, the, the, um, the little half pipe and I skated the bowl and stuff. Yeah, so. Yeah. so when I first got, and that's one of the reasons too, because I was more, because I was more into skateboarding, moving to Whistler, even so I love snowboarding, I was kind of like, eh, like, is there a skate park? And I knew I was, I knew that it was near Vancouver and I knew Vancouver and that was kind of my goal. It was like, move to Whistler, get better at English, you know, figure out your, your, you know, basically because it was less scary to move to a place where I already knew some people. Whistler was kind of a nice friendly place and it was actually one of the best thing I did because I was, a great 10 years of my life I'm, i met so many good people and while i was there i was also going to vancouver a lot so i met people in vancouver so i was having i was creating my community like already i was building it up and then and basically i was that park was i was just getting built so basically it was only the bowl when i got there oh and, uh, okay yeah, yeah so there was only the bowl and uh i don't know if i it, if I, if you, you know what, there's a two big quarter pipe. Yeah, yeah. In the pyramid, that was like the only part that was, and the spine, basically like everything like from like the 
back of that was it's all newer right that's all been built like the last few years okay. so when i was there basically it was only the bowl and the pier like the new the newer part that we were calling was just getting finished and it was basically done in 2000 so i was able to skate i skated it a bit while it was being built so i was like some of the first one that skated the pyramid because it was just you know so so that was a good part to to I skated that part a lot when I uh when I lived there because that's all that was the only park Sk skated a bit around Whistler but it's not with, like Whistler had a lot of street stuff yeah but yeah but I've always been the type of guy that um, when there's a spot that like people gather this is where I go because I'm not the type of person to call and be like hey you want to go skate I'm always just, I grab my skate and I go skate. And I, I, I basically might skate by myself or I'll just skate somewhere where I know there's people. So it all depends on how I feel. Sometimes I just want to go cruise and skate kind of like more Gonzalez style, like street. And I just all eat. I just basically just bring my little fanny pack with some water and I just go. And I don't know where I'm going. And I just kind of F around and just play, do some little shut. And I just love this type of skating because this is what I I grew up doing. Like we skated to everywhere. We stopped to spot, but we couldn't really stop for that long because we were getting yelled at, kicked out. So we understood that what we could do is skate, stop to a spot, skate, 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 kicked out, keep going, go to the other spot, then skate, get kicked out. <laughs> so we kind of just did that. And I don't know how we survived because I don't remember. It took a while before we had backpack and water. I, I, I yeah, <laughs> we, uh, yeah. Back then, the electrolyte was not inside me or something because, uh, yeah, just living on nothing. Oh man, listen, I, I was I was the same way, man. I used to skate so fast and <laughs> and do tricks. And some guy, I remember one guy was hanging out with me. I was like, "Yo, let's go skate," and we went. Pfft, I, we went for like, we went we went a long distance, and I, and I was just going kicking, 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 and he was just like, "Yo, man, can you can you can you can you take it? You're going too fast." <laughs> and I was exactly. like, "Oh man, just keep up, you know." And and it was it was crazy because I was I was so skinny back then, and I was eating, <laughs> and I was I mean I was drinking alcohol. Actually, I wasn't drinking alcohol. I was just eating a lot back then a lot and um but you know skating and dancing like four nights a week yeah i was fit <laughs> nice yeah i know that's exactly it. basically i never yeah i never really had an issue i'm i'm basically easy yeah now when i got older it's a definitely different i don't like it's not that i can't like i can still eat a lot but i just like mm -hmm. i just get fish i just don't like feeling like that so i try to eat lighter my the days of me being like bah, <laughs> it's kind of over but i can still do it and i don't i'm pretty lucky that i i burn it usually but and i don't feel, i don't really feel good being full i don't know how people yeah i my my food relation now is definitely i'm realizing that uh overeating is uh something that uh, if I, you want to be uh, on it i'm always pretty much uh eat a little smoothie and then go skate. I, I eat my every meal at, at night when I'm done. <laughs> so I'm not, not that sluggish. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, it, I, I, go ahead. No, I just going to say like, I basically like, as I got older, I, um, when I, when I was younger, I, I sprained my ankle a lot skateboarding. And because I love skateboarding a lot, I just kept skating and put ankle brace and stuff like that. And I had a, quite a long period of my life before I got the right uh, mindset and also like guidance to be like, Hey, like you should stop doing that. Uh, Cause it was like basically like popping a few Advil, go skate, sprain your ankles, tape it. Yeah. I was like, and that kind of for, for a while, I was like so wanting to progress and did not want to take time off skateboarding. I was like wrecking myself. That was like, the time that skateboarding was not healthy for me. Um, it's funny because it's like, I kind of bl blocked that part of my life because it's like something I'm like, but it was around when I was like 20, when that was when I was in Worcester. I, when I first got to Worcester, I was skating the pyramid 
the pyramid for the first time, like, and I was like, uh, super sketchy because it, it was a little wet, but I was super eager on skating that big pyramid. And I was trying all the ill flip and I sprained my, I rolled my ankle like super bad. And I was like, I got there in, uh, in August and I did that in October. So I was like, first few months that I moved to Whistler, I wrecked my ankle. Like I did not know if it was broken. And I was like, and basically the next day I was working my, my new job. So I go to work, like just like, and, yeah, it's like limping. My, the chef was like, go home. <laughs> He's like, what did you not call sick? Are you crazy? I was because I was raised by my dad was literally like so like, you know, like he sent me to he, he, my dad sent me to, to school and I got returned back. You know, like, <laughs> it was like it, basically I, he was just like, if you're able to walk, you go. So it's kind of mentality. Like you eat we were kind of laughing about it. He regrets it. Like we joke about it, like all like it was just the way like he was just man up you go and he thought I was faking and stuff like that there was a lot of that because it's not like I was like the perfect student so <laughs> long story but yeah